Welcome, everyone. My name is Natalia Galanina. Hello, hello. I'm very happy and delighted, delighted that you managed to join us. Um, the webinar is devoted to international exo exams and IELTS in particular. And before we start, as usual, some housekeeping announcements. Um, certificate will be available and um, this webinar is being recorded. And after the webinar, you'll get a uh, follow email with a link where you, with the, the recorded webinar and the link where you can um, upload your certificate. Okay, let's get started. So whether you prepare your students for qualifications or exams or just helping them to improve their language skills, Macmillan Education has um, everything you need uh, to help you to enhance your learner's uh, learning journey. So we've got um, materials because we've got, we work with teachers, trainers, we've got with, uh, we work with examiners who write materials for every levels of uh, the student's learning journey. So we've got course books like Academy Stars with embedded um, uh, with embedded pages devoted to young learners' exams. Then we've got the um, rather relatively new course, which is called Optimize for updated A, A2 key and B1 preliminary exam, and of course, uh, B2 first. Then we've got uh, the, the series, which is called Ready For, and I strongly recommend this series because I, 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 I used it when uh, I was preparing for my CA exam. It's Ready For First and Ready For CAE. And then um, on, on Macmillan Russia website, you can see the whole range of course books, the, the whole range of course or series, um, um, which um, will help you uh, to prepare your students for Rainier exams. Uh, for example, um, I strongly also recommend uh, the series which is called straight to straight to first or straight to CAE it's kind of a crash course that you can use for example if you've got um, uh, quite a short amount of um, time for for your students to take their exams and we have the whole page devoted to IELTS and this is the exam our guest speaker Lydia Lysenko will be talking today and um, so we've got um, test builders we've got different levels of course books which can help your students even from the lower level uh, to prepare for this exam. We've got um, graduation, foundation course, and our bestseller, uh, Ready for IELTS. This is the second edition of the bestseller all over the world. And Lydia Lysenko, again, our guest speaker, will be using screenshots from this course book she, she's currently using. And uh, we've also got um, course books and all the materials um, uh, for a relatively new exam, which is called Language Cert. And you can see... Um, different qualifications of this exam board and i would say this is um uh, quite a revolutionary because um it is based on award-winning technology and uh, language set uh, online exam with remote live invigilation provide a secure and reliable way uh, for candidates to take exams from their preferred location isn't it nice so that without having to visit um a test center and um, we have everything you need to, uh, to teach your students in class for blended learning and uh, for distance teaching. And we have materials to help you in these difficult circumstances. Uh, at your disposal, we've, we've got everything you, uh, you need for, um, for distance teaching. It's presentation kit, online workbook, test generators, um, extra worksheets. Uh, for example, um, this is the example or screenshot from Ready for IELTS, which is Lydia will be using today as well. And at your disposal is presentation kit of a student's book. Uh, teachers resource center digital students book and ebook with answers so you can choose any any unit you teach and you've got the page faithful of your course book this is the example of a digital students book with embedded audio so you don't need to press uh, any extra buttons just press this audio button the audio is embedded and then you can see them the, the button on the left of the audio this makes the um, activity even more interactive so with um, in, with the answers which you can show to your students, for example, for peer checking, for self checking, uh, you can show all the answers or next answers. So these are practical and useful tools that that you can use uh, either in classroom or for blended learning. And of course, I think it's um, so it, 
you can use it for distance learning as it, it as it is intended my question to you uh, what is the biggest challenge for you when preparing students for exams could you please type in the chat box what might be the biggest challenge okay yes I, I can see that you are typing in the chat box Mm -hmm. I'm waiting for your for your answers in the chat. The biggest challenge, lazy students, teaching writing. Thank you, Natalia, Galina. Mm -hmm. Shortage in time. So you can see all the answers. Mm -hmm. Prepare them for speaking and writing. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Vadim. Mm -hmm. Not knowing exact requirements, not enough time. Parents, mm -hmm. writing making them speak mm -hmm. so yes mostly productive skills writing and speaking uh, teaching vocabulary mm -hmm. uh -huh. and productive skills are speaking and writing mm -hmm. too much pressure motivation okay thank you very much I'm, I'm going to show you my answer yes i absolutely agree to all your wonderful answers um Sometimes exam practice materials can be soulless and dry and they are very much divorced from real lives because nobody in real life uh, describes graphs or pie charts, probably it's a very rare exception. And sometimes our exam students, the students that we teach for exams, they lose motivation. And Lilia also has mentioned it, so motivation or lazy students. And lack of time motivation, Aksana has typed also. Uh, so why our students become demotivated? So could you please type in the chat box? So uh, because some exam boards claim that preparing for exams uh, boost motivation. So probably uh, for some students it's true. So we uh, perform to the best of our ability when we prepare for exams, but the majority of students, they exhibit the behavior, then they lack motivation. Lack of self-esteem, Anastasia, mm -hmm, might be. Mm -hmm. So why are students become demotivated while preparing for exams? Though some statistics show, and I've already said that exam boards use these statistics that they the motivation raises. So I can see that you're typing in the chat box. I'm waiting for your answers in the chat. And then I'll show you my ideas, why some students, not all of them, uh, lose motivation. Don't exactly understand why they're taking it. Okay, Anna, maybe. Mm -hmm. Not enough information. Vadim, thank you for your support. Then they don't see the intermediate result, immediate, intermediate results. Mm -hmm. Okay. Too difficult, Ekaterina. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your answer. So I'll show you my ideas. Um, some students become demotivated while preparing for exams because English becomes not an end, becomes an end, not a means of communication. Another uh, reason might be uh, materials might be boring, um, and um, then um, repetitive drilling. Uh, all the classes so then they do exam materials exam materials exam materials and so on and of course uh, increased accuracy demands so when um, we um, we mark everything they do uh, we check um, all the papers of course we have to do some uh, some in the, we have to do some um, exam tasks in the course books because our students who are, we are preparing for exams they should know the format structure and the strategies for exams and sometimes we feel uh, that we are um, we are restricted to do all the exam materials and all the exam require exam skills but they are not designed to test them so they are designed to test language skills and um, I want to warn you that please don't feel um, restricted to do only the exam materials um, uh, sometimes uh, we can adapt material and we use them as a resources and to suit our purposes and uh, their our purposes to gain better results and our guest speaker, uh, Lydia Lysenko, 
uh, will be sharing her thoughts and ideas. Well, she will be sharing with you her practical tips so that you can easily implement into your classroom. How can you use, easily adapt material, make it more engaging, to spice up your classes? Uh, so that to um, to engage your students because engagement is key. So Lydia Lysenko is a senior teacher and uh, exam trainer at a language school pilot in Rostov on Don, and we are very proud that this school is a Macmillan partner because we always give flaws uh, to Macmillan partners. It's, it's a part of our partnership program. So Lydia, over to you. Please join us. Press the mic and webcam button. So the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you, Natalia. Um, hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. And thank you to those who will watch recorded webinar later. I'm really delighted to be here today. Uh, and I was reading your answers in the chat box, and I noticed that uh, writing and speaking are uh, the biggest challenges that your students, uh, biggest challenges that your students face. And uh, surprisingly, these topics are included in my webinar today, or maybe not surprisingly. And I'm going to share some tips, some tasks that I use to uh, involve my learners into preparation um, of this part. Uh, so, uh, of course, I won't be in the next 50 minutes. I won't be able to highlight all um, main features, but I've decided to focus on academic module writing uh, task, um, writing task, and speaking uh, section task two. Uh, before we start, in the chat box, can you please type the what kinds of tasks can students encounter in writing section academic module task one? Please, your answers in the chat box. Mm -hmm. Graph, yes, that's right. Chart, picture, graph. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you. Map process. Thank you. Right. We have lots of experienced teachers today. Uh, just to remind you, yeah, uh, the types of tasks that we have in uh, part one. I will show you my slides. It could be a bar chart on the left, on the right, pie chart. Uh, the next task uh, type task could be a table. Um, you mentioned that it could be a line graph. It could be a process when candidates are asked to describe how something is made. Or it could be a map, not frequently appear in uh, papers, but still it's there and we have to prepare our students for this uh, task type as well. Right. Um, and also I wanted to remind you that uh, task one, uh, in task one, candidates are allowed uh, 20 minutes to complete the task. They have to write at least 150 words and summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and making comparisons where relevant. At the first glance, the task looks quite manageable and achievable, but still, why so many candidates uh, struggle with it? Uh, because at a closer look, we see that this uh, task involves or candidates have to demonstrate certain micro skills to, uh, to uh, fulfill this task successfully. Uh, let, let, let's um, have a closer look what I mean. Uh, the first micro skill this task involves is the ability to read and analyze a graph. So, in other words, it's a matter of uh, uh, being able to see what's illustrated in the graph. Another ability is to identify key trends and less important trends. It could be the highest, the lowest trend. It could be some volatile data, some erratic change, some uh, notable exceptions. Uh, the next one is the ability to plan which data to include and group because uh, the task asks, uh, asks us to summarize, yeah, not to mechanically rewrite uh, the trends, but to summarize and group uh, the trends that go together or are completely different. Uh, the next skill would be the ability to organize writing into paragraphs. Uh, we 
No, yeah, that uh, there is a certain structure where candidates have to write an introduction, paraphrasing the task given, they have to write an overview sentence, and they have to uh, include um, main trends and uh, less important trends in the main body paragraphs. And uh, the last but not least skill uh, is the ability to use academic language. And I saw also in the comments in the chat box that uh, some students fail to, uh, to demonstrate this academic language. Uh, to um, illustrate close to what I mean, let's, uh, let's turn to assessment criteria. And also in the chat box, can you please type one if when you start preparing your candidates, familiarize them with assessment criteria writing? And put two, if you think that assessment criteria are designed for teachers. Mm -hmm. Great. One, one, one. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. Uh, me too. I absolutely agree that we have to familiarize our students with assessment criteria because when candidates uh, know what is required, what is expected from them, what candidates, uh, sorry, what are examiners looking for in their pieces of writing, then they are able to stand to, to these criteria and to get a desired band. Uh, in today's talk, I'll be focusing on um, just a quick reminder, yeah, um, assessment criteria, they include task achievement, it's uh, how well the uh, candidate uh, completes the task, whether uh, they include all information and fo follow the task. Uh, the next one, coherence and cohesion, is how well the uh, candidate organizes their ideas. Uh, lexical resources and grammatical range and accuracy, uh, showing the range of uh, vocabulary and grammar they use. And I'd like to focus today on uh, lex lexical resources. And if we compare bands six, seven, and eight, uh, the most desirable bands yeah, for candidates uh, from six to 7.5, probably, we see that uh, to get point, uh, point six, band six, sorry, uh, uh, our candidates have to attempt to use less common vocabulary, but with some inaccuracy. Uh, for band seven, candidates have to use less common lexical items with awareness of style and collocation. And already for band eight, uh, candidates have skillfully used uncommon lexical items, but there may be some occasional inaccuracies as well. When we say less common lexical items, what we mean? Can you define it in two, three words in the chat box? Lex uh, less common lexical items. How do you understand it? Two, three words definition in the chat box, please. Less common lexis. What is it? Mm -hmm. Rarely used words, very specific. Topical vocabulary, right, not commonly used. Uh, C1, C2 in the marks, C1, C2 in the dictionary. Uh, yes, thank you for your ideas. And I've also checked the definition and uh, it says that um, less common vocabulary doesn't mean some rare words, but it means the words that native speakers use when they describe a certain situation. Uh, so, returning to the graphs, uh, uh, candidates yeah, who are preparing for a uh, writing task, they mainly use the words go up, go down, or increase or decrease. But there are many more other words and ways how to introduce these uh, words, how to introduce these lexis in their active vocabulary. Uh, and here, let me illustrate my idea with an exercise from the book Ready for IELTS. In, uh, in my slide, you see an exercise which asks learners to match parts of the graph with vocabulary, with verbs. For example, uh, trend AB corresponds to the word deep. Uh, can you please ju ju just an exercise type the answer to number two? 
BC, which word would you choose to describe trend from B to C? Plummet, okay. A, heat a law. Mm -hmm. Plummet, yeah, the right answer is plummet because heat a law, uh, it, it would be G. It's the lowest point in, in the graph. Thank you. Uh, the task is quite uh, obvious, yeah? After our students matched graphs and um, uh, verbs which describe these uh, trends, uh, what extension activities can we use? Yeah, this um, task that Natalia has been talking about, which help to bring some variety, dynamics, interaction to your classroom. Uh, the first um, activity is a pair work, or if uh, it's an individual class, if you work with, with the student individually, student A can uh, say the letters, for example, say FH, and student B says the uh, correct word. After that, they swap roles. Uh, after having enough practice with that, you can extend this activity a bit more. And the next step would be, again, to ask students to work in pairs or teacher student A and uh, candidate student B. Uh, student A says a verb, for example, plummet, and the candidate has to draw uh, this trend. So by, again, this uh, simple and easy exercises, you can provide lots of practice and most importantly, lots of drillings first with these words. And that would be the first keystone in building our candidates vocabulary. So we are just getting familiar with necessary vocabulary, thus broadening uh, the scope of this vocabulary that candidates can use uh, when dealing with task one and describing graphs. Um, what else can we do to help our learners? Uh, another feature of a more advanced um, level of English is the ability to uh, use synonymic words or the ability to paraphrase uh, uh, some ideas and it helps, it contributes to the flow of speech. Uh, the candidate's ability to talk about the same ideas using uh, synonymic expressions. And if we look at this uh, exercise in the book, uh, students have underlined uh, part of a sentence, uh, dropped, and this was followed by a period of stability. And the task is to substitute the underlying text with a synonymic verb or some synonymic construction from exercise one. Uh, and uh, the price of laptops dropped and this followed by a period of stability. I uh, turn the uh, slide, this slide. Can you please choose the corresponding synonym? we can use to substitute the underlined part of sentence. Dropped and followed by a period of stability. Leveled off. Remained flat. Uh, not exactly, because it dropped and then f there was a period of stability. It means that the trend leveled off. Yeah? Yes. Uh, fell and then leveled off. B. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Um, so let, let's see uh, what else we can uh, do, some other activities that we can use uh, to help our learners. Just a second. Mm -hmm. The activity is called a Transformation Dictation. Uh, the, uh, the idea of this task is that a teacher or another student, if you work in pairs, says a sentence using structure one, and student B has to change it to, the, to structure number two, to a synonymic structure, without changing the meaning or changing the tense. And in the example, you can see this idea. The price of computers has grown considerably. And student B says there has been a considerable growth in the price of computers. Okay, uh, uh, please put a plus if the idea of this activity is clear. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Great. Um, 
so this exercise brings us to another uh, or this example brings us to another feature of academic uh, English in writing. One of the typical features of academic writing is the usage of noun phrases uh, uh, more than uh, verb phrases. And uh, this construction, the, these two sentences is a good illustration of this. For example, sentence A shows us the pattern uh, subject plus verb and plus adverb but uh, sentence B shows us the construction there plus verb B plus adjective and plus noun. So this is uh, thing number two or uh, element of language number two that we have to train our students to use after introducing them to this uh, variety and diversity of vocabulary. All right, let's look with you at one more activity that you can use when you practice um, academic writing. It's called find your chart. I uh, like and use this activity a lot, especially with group of students. The idea is that you put graphs on the wall and then you give random graph description to your students. Your students have to walk around the class and find uh, a graph which, which matches uh, their description. Uh, after that, as an extension to this activity, you can collect the cards, redistribute them, because you, uh, if, if you have uh, lots of students, redistribute and repeat this activity as many times, uh, depending on how many cards you have. If, again, you teach an individual class, you can just distribute these cards, graphs, yeah, pictures, graphs on the table and give your student descript uh, descriptive cards and student just looks at the cards on the table and matches them with the correct description. Uh, and one more uh, extension of this activity, uh, it's in point three. Again, you give students or your student a graph and after you've uh, done the previous two activities, you ask them to write a 30, 40 words description in IELTS style. Uh, yes, we all remember that in IELTS they write 150 words, but, but, but still it's a good um, recap activity to revise yeah, and recycle the language. And uh, that, that would be a good practice. You can use it as a start, for example, um, uh, in the lesson or at the end of the lesson, just, just, just to sum up uh, what you've studied. Uh, and um, the next activity I'd like to share with you, just a second, um, sorry. Mm -hmm. It's called Mingle and Flash uh, Sentence Extension. It's also variation of the activity that we discussed, but this time your students are given uh, slips of paper with a sentence. Um, students mingle and show their sl uh, slips uh, to each other, and the other student has to produce a correct sentence. And the example, just a second, we'll show you an example. This slide illustrates how it looks like. So the text in columns represent slips of paper. So for example, on uh, you choose the words uh, fall, you choose the word gradually, and you choose the time phrase, and you write these words on the slips of uh, paper with a slash. And when students meet, um, uh, they show their slips of paper to each other and student B has to produce a sentence. Uh, uh, there are also two approaches how you can use this activity. For example, at, uh, for lower levels or when you just start practicing these words, you can use only column verb and adverb. Uh, but for stronger students and uh, when students are already familiar with the words and uh, with the format and uh, have be become quite fluent, you can introduce time phrase. Uh, why time phrase column is good? Because it helps your learners to practice different tense forms, tenses forms. For example, the words increase slowly by the end of the year 2000. We turn into a sentence by the year 2000. It had increased slowly to 90%. For example, this is a great way also to practice um, the target vocabulary. 
All right, and one more activity. It's called substitution dictation. Uh, we already looked with you at an exercise in the book Ready for IELTS when students are asked to substitute, to change the structure uh, with one of the words or synonyms or synonymic structures, but have to keep the meaning uh, to, to the previous sentence. For example, there was a substitutional rise in sales and the can, uh, student B turns it into there was a significant rise in the sales. And you also see the extension to this idea that to make it more challenging, the students has to substitute both the adjective and the noun or the verb and an adverb. Please, in the chat box, can you write your ideas how you can substitute uh, adjective and verb in this sentence. So, uh, sorry, uh, adjective and noun in this sentence. Suggest your variation of this sentence. Mm, there was a paramount growth in sales. Thank you. Sales have increased greatly. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Sizable increase. Mm -hmm. All right. Lots of good collocations. Significant increase. Good. Mm -hmm. Well done. Uh, yeah. So let's move on. And uh, one more extension to uh, an exercise from the book. First, let's look uh, to an exercise. Uh, the exercise in the book asks learners to complete a modal sample of the text, a modal of the text with the correct words, correct phrases, which are given in exercise two. After your students completed this text and you've checked the answers, you can uh, ask your learners to rewrite the text using their own ideas but using the target words from the text uh, from the modal text the words that you need to practice before that you can put these words on the table um, and just um, take away the modal text from your students and ask them to include the phrases from the board into, the, into their own piece of writing. Again, uh, in this way, you would achieve a revision of uh, the, the target words for your students. Uh, another step, but it would require a bit more preparation time from you when you rewrite the text yourself, modal text yourself. I, I mean, not rewrite, but uh, when you include some irrelevant data uh, which are not shown in, uh, in the graph. Yeah, for example, some data which is not there and you give this text to your learners, they have to read and find out which uh, information is extra there. Uh, what skill would it uh, develop in your learners? Please, in the chat box, if they correct the, um, if they correct the writing for mistakes, what skill would it be? So can't, can't see your answers yet. So once again, would revise uh, the task. For example, you rewrite a modal text, but yes, uh, you rewrite a modal text, but you include there some irrelevant information. For example, some personal opinion, why uh, some, some changes happen in the trend, or you include, uh, you put the wrong uh, description of the trend, instead of saying increasing, you say something decreases, you put the wrong numbers. What skill would it develop in your learners? They will realize that you don't have to include all the information into the description. Cohesion and coherence, uh, not quite sure. Accuracy, mm -hmm. critical thinking. Uh, probably it would refer to the ability to develop, the ability to interpret the data, 
right? Attention to details. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, I think it's also critical to train our candidates to be attentive to the details uh, because when they read a sample text and try to compare it with the, uh, with the given graph, they would have to analyze uh, what is wrong, what is not wrong, and thus would develop their critical thinking. Reading for specific information, great, thank you very much. Again, this uh, um, type of exercise may be not that uh, popular uh, with teachers because it will take some of your time, but at the same time you can store your collection yeah, of um, bank activities and from time to time you already have ready texts that you, you can easily use with uh, future candidates. Right. Uh, also, we have to remind our students that they lose marks if they include any uh, subjective opinion. Uh, for example, they, they uh, like including their deductions. I think uh, this decrease happened because people didn't have enough money to spend on computers because of economic crisis. Yeah, uh, you also can include this information in the graph and see how well your students can uh, spot it out, uh, can notice it and remind that no uh, subjective information, only objective uh, analysis of data presented in the graph. Okay, and uh, one more thing I'd like to mention about uh, work with graph is the usage of um, checklists please in the chat box put a plus if, if you use writing checklist with your learners mm -hmm. great well done uh, in the slide you see a checklist, writing checklist uh, for task one. Uh, also, there is a checklist for task two from the book Ready for IELTS. And this checklist is a great way uh, to minimize learners' mistakes. Um, it has a wide range, it covers a wide range, wide scope of different questions, thus allowing your learners uh, to notice whether they have included all information in their pieces of writing. Let's just look at uh, some random questions there. Uh, for example, have you written a clear overview sentence? That's quite often a case when uh, students miss to, to write an overview um, statement and it's reflected in the criteria and they easily lose marks, they're easily penalized for this. Or um, um, have you included a, a wide range of grammar vocabulary? Have you used synonyms? Have you used, um, the, uh, have you uh, written accurately and coherently and so on and so forth. So when you regularly expose, expose your learners to this uh, writing checklist, you train the ability to assess themselves and to make sure they included all necessary information in um, their writing their piece of writing. All right, uh, so this is all I have uh, for writing section. Before we move on to speaking section and look at some activities, um, sorry, to speaking section, look at some activities uh, in this part, uh, can you please type any questions about writing? Some clarification questions, if you have any. No question yet. Mm -hmm. Then uh, uh, can you please write one takeaway uh, about writing section, which may be activity or which idea you would like to use your, uh, with your students straight away? Mm -hmm. Finding a chart activity. Uh, okay, so you mean the activity when you have to stick them on the uh, walls, yeah, and um, make your students mingle. Okay, transformation dictation, using checklists. Okay, thank you very much. All great, uh, great ideas. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. So now let's move on to speaking. Uh, speaking part and just a quick reminder that uh, speaking includes three parts. Uh, part one, interview, where examiner asks some personal questions about hobbies, work, uh, family, uh, future plans, uh, food you like, and so on and so forth. Part two, individual loan turn, where candidates have to uh, describe a card given. Uh, and to cover all the prompts that are presented in the card. And part three is a two-way discussion, which is uh, actually a follow-up on the topic that candidates had in uh, task two. And all in all, uh, speaking test uh, lasts between 11 and 14 minutes. Um, okay, so let's turn with you to, to the task itself. Uh, if we look at the task uh, presented in, in the book Ready for IELTS, we see that uh, the card asks students to describe a building or monument that you find impressive. Uh, I guess that uh, this, this kind of task, I mean specifically the topic describing a building or monument could, could be quite a challenge for uh, learners. Can you type why it's a challenge? No background knowledge. Thank you, Alexandra. Mm -hmm. Not enough vocabulary, right. Mm -hmm. Had to choose in one minute, not enough vocabulary. Yeah, uh, I uh, purposefully decided uh, not enough vocabulary. Yes, yes, vocabulary. Um, I um, on, uh, purposefully decided to take this card because um, uh, there are some topics that present a real challenge for them and uh, they can't immediately decide uh, what vocabulary to use. And um, uh, in relation to this, uh, there is a, a really nice activity. It's called, maybe there are some variations, but, but I know that it's called an expert. The idea of this activity as uh, that, that first you elicit from your learners who the expert is, uh, who the expert is. Can you please define it in the chat box? Three, four words. Mm -hmm. Waiting for your answers. I see. Someone who knows a topic well. Mm -hmm. Right, yes, someone who knows about some topic more than uh, other average people, knows everything about the subject, great. So first you elicit from your learners who the experts are, and then you assign or uh, let them choose some trip, uh, I mean, not uh, let them choose, but you have a collection of uh, some topics and they just pick up a topic and become an expert in this topic. For example, some of the uh, fun cases that I had with my students, uh, let's imagine that you are an expert on the topic of bananas. So, and for example, in one minute or two minutes, it depends uh, on the level of your students, you have to talk continuously nonstop and to tell us everything you know about bananas. Or for example, you are an expert on rocks or mountains. Yeah, so your uh, task is to choose some tricky topics uh, that can cause some, uh, th that can bewilder yeah, uh, your students. Or for example, you are uh, an expert on the topic of rain. Tell us everything you know about this phenomena. Um, so, and uh, what can help our learners to approach this task successfully when you teach your students to look at this topic from different perspectives? For example, if, again, we take with you the topic of bananas, from which perspectives can we look at it, thus allowing our learners some language material to use and to talk about in their answers? Please, in the chat box, perspectives. Mm -hmm. Right, as nutrition, good. What else? Mm 
uh, absolutely income as a source of export for some countries good good idea so financial aspect yeah good animals yes uh, it's uh, it, it it's both the nutrition for people and for animals uh, great uh, i i want to encourage you not not and uh, so you also encourage your learners not to be afraid of the uh, some bold ideas uh, quite often i hear that candidates say this idea is uh, too simple this idea is too obvious or this idea sounds uh, pardon me stupid yeah and uh, they see it this way but in this situation, they should forget about this and brainstorm and come up with all possible ideas. Medical purposes, right? Maybe uh, you can invent, yeah, that the, the uh, that banana skin can serve as some medical treatment for some diseases. Yeah, who knows? Or maybe some tribes use it as, as a med medical resource. Yeah, good travel and holidays to pick up bananas. Yeah, why not? So you see, uh, you can take uh, some tricky topic and turn it into a fine uh, fun activity with your learners. After you discuss cast uh, this topic from different perspectives you are absolutely right in your comments you mentioned that a learner struggle with lack of vocabulary how can you help with this uh, i want to show you one um, website that i use it's called answer garden uh, please uh, put a plus if you already use it with your learners mm -hmm. okay natalia Mm hmm great uh, um, so what 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 what's the idea of this um, resource just a second uh, I want to demonstrate it mm -hmm. uh, so I, I guess probably I won't be able to share a screen apart from uh, yeah, apart from my presentation, the idea is that you go to the uh, site which is called Answer Garden. It's absolutely free. It takes you just uh, three seconds to create a question there. And my question is, for example, what adjectives can you use to describe a building? Getting back to, to, to the topic card that we had. You give, uh, and w when you wrote these questions, uh, you have this code. You just share it with your students. And your students brainstorm all possible words they can use to describe a building. Let's practice it now in the chat box your ideas what words can we use to describe a building thank you mm -hmm. thank you natalia huge grand mm -hmm. also when you think of a building uh think of physical uh, uh, think about it from physical perspective and maybe some emotional perspective mm -hmm. Again, different perspectives, stunning, ancient, right, great, enormous brick, mm -hmm. great, thank you very much for your ideas. So the same as we do in, in the chat box right now, uh, your students brainstorm their uh, ideas um, in Ants Garden. And after that, you show it in your screen, all the words appear and learners, for example, who, uh, yes, thank you, breathtaking. Uh, for example, learners who know just one or two words to describe a building, they can already see uh, maybe five, 10 or 15 words, depending um, how many your students have contributed. Uh, and you, uh, it already helps and saves your time. You can together, um, analyze these words you can pair up your students and ask for example if you know the meaning of this word explain it to uh, the uh, can the student who doesn't know the meaning of this word so again you organize pair work in your class uh, and after that we uh, after you brainstorm some relevant vocabulary we can compare the words that we have with the words that uh, the book ready for IELTS presents you see that uh, here is a box with words and uh, students have to uh, categorize it uh, 
column A describe a building physically and uh, column B describe, uh, use the word to say what effect it has on you. Yeah, so to categorize these words. And you compare, you can add something or maybe with your learners, you uh, will notice that you've used all the words or even more. And this exercise presents really good words such as evocative or dazzling, overwhelmed, and so on. So thus, all these activities leads to the extension of the vocabulary on some uh, on a given topic. As a follow-up, uh, Again, we develop learners' ability to use different grammar structures to express the same uh, idea, to add flow to your answers, to, to express different shades of meaning, to be more precise when expressing uh, uh, the meaning. And all this is valuable for candidates who want a higher band. And this exercise asks um, our students to uh, change the form of the word from the previous exercise that we've just looked with you at and complete the gaps, thus uh, providing us with practice uh, to practice word formation. And again, uh, bring in some uh, variety and paraphrase to um, student speech. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And um, just a second, wanted to share. Uh, with you some more activities. Um, just a second. So one, one tip how to make uh, your students uh, speak yeah, for uh, one minute or longer, because in, in this task, you have to speak between one uh, and two minutes. And again, for candidates, it's, it's sometimes a problem to, to, to speak uh, or they become too repetitive and finish in 30 seconds. So the first, uh, uh, fir first uh, make it manageable, yeah? some baby steps or one scene at a time. Uh, say where the building is, speak for 10 seconds. Then you add another prompt from the card. Say where the, uh, say where the beautiful, uh, sorry, uh, building is and what it is. Uh, uh, and you extend the time for 20 seconds. Then say where the building is, what it is, and what it is like, and extend your answer for 40 seconds, and so on. Yeah, where the building is, what it is like, and um, what it is like, why it's your favorite building, and speak for uh, 60 seconds uh, or more. Again, it depends on the level of your learners. If they're weaker, probably it's enough to train them for one minute. Uh, if they're strong candidates, extend the time and make them speak for two minutes. Uh, and uh, let's have a look at this task activity. Uh, it's called IELTS Dice Game. Uh, do you use a dice in your classroom? Put a plus, yes. Yes, 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 great. Lots, lo lots of uh, experienced teachers there. Good. Uh, uh, the, uh, I, I would show you the full version. Of course, uh, you are free to adapt. For example, uh, the, the first you assign to each number on the dice, you assign a topic. And we all uh, all the topics from task one can be subdivided into the following categories. It could be a description of a person, of a place. Um, uh, it could be description of an action, situation, object, or number six, it, it could be a free uh, choice. So your uh, students are free to choose what to talk about. Uh, when they throw the dice for the second time, uh, you uh, can assign a tense your students have to use when um, uh, given a talk on the card that they have. And uh, let's look at more extensions there. Uh, when they throw the dice for the third time and the fourth time, here they already choose the uh, question words. When, where, how, yeah, it's up to them. Uh, and when they throw the dice already uh, for the next time, here they can include extra questions to uh, build or to design their own question. For example, it could be explain why, it could be uh, talk about your feelings, it could be compare it with something. And when you get all these um, 
points uh, you give some time your students or help them or again your students work in pairs to design a question to talk about so you see uh, this activity uh, you, you can uh, adjust it to your needs yeah you can take just one um, topic where they choose a topic or where they choose a tense and so on or to adjust it uh, adjust it to your needs uh, depending on what you want to practice um, right, and uh, let's have a look at this activity. Uh, here is, uh, you design a chart where you include description, uh, important vocabulary, useful grammar, feelings, opinion, or something extra. And uh, column two illustrates the example. For example, uh, let, uh, let's imagine that the topic is favorite animal. Uh, you give your learners some time, they have to come up with the good grammar, good vocabulary they are going to use in their talk. Uh, let's look at examples, wild, endangered animal, how to describe an animal, for example, to use some specific vocabulary that it has a mane or it has claws, important vocabulary, natural habitat, useful grammar, it's something like, or I'm not sure how to call it, but it's something, and feelings and so on and so forth. So why uh, it's good to have a table like this? Because it teaches your candidates to focus on specific words, vocabulary, grammar. We all know that when we are stressed, we tend to use more basic and easy vocabulary, everyday words. To avoid this, you train your learners when they use uh, this preparation time, one minute, that they have in uh, in the exam, they have to brainstorm all the words that uh, will help to boost their score. Yeah, so less common vocabulary, and they um, stick to their notes when providing an answer, and they get a higher score. Uh, again, your candidates, uh, some extension of this activity, candidates can work in pairs. So again, you as student B, when candidate A gives an answer. Candidate B assesses a candidate using the um, speaking checklist, or a candidate tries to notice, also complete this chart, tries to notice what words were used to describe um, an animal, for example, what useful grammar, or how the candidate demonstrated wide range of grammar, and which uh, good words were included. Or, for example, here you can add a column, the usage of discourse markers uh, to contribute to um, coherence and cohesion and to flow to the answer. So uh, the main idea is to make all the learners uh, busy yeah, with something when somebody is speaking, because uh, sometimes I see that uh, while one candidate is answering, uh, some other candidates are just sitting, waiting, doing nothing and waiting for their turn. But we uh, have to organize the process in such a way that everybody contributes um, and gets something uh, from, from this task. Mm -hmm. All right, and um, also some notes here, yeah? how to organize a pair work. Uh, you choose a topic, uh, plan what you will say and make notes of useful phrases. Then you take notes to give uh, the talk. If it's possible, you can uh, make a recording of the answer and listen yeah, um, to, to, to the answer. And uh, when your partner is speaking, check that they have covered all the points on the card, that they structured the answer well, use discourse markers, and give each other feedback um, uh, using the notes that uh, you made while listening to the candidate. Uh, so again, all these as uh, with writing checklist or speaking checklist, it teaches our students peer assessment, how to give feedback, and again, gives them more understanding what should be done or should uh, basically, yeah, what should be done to get a high score um, in IELTS exam. Right, so uh, probably that's it uh, I have time for. 
about writing and um, speaking parts in IELTS exam. Hope uh, some of these ideas were useful for you and you, you can use them straight away in your class after the webinar and it will help to save your preparation time for the lesson. Now, if you have any questions, uh, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Um, probably one more thing I'd like to show. Uh, here are some ways how you can contact me. Uh, if you need some help or if, if you want to clarify something and um, again I'll be ready to share some materials to share some more ideas that I have in stock uh, to help you to prepare for IELTS. Thank you. Please share other useful websites or resources. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, can, can you... Um, uh, can you please clarify what you mean, uh, websites, resources, where to find um, material for IELTS or where to find Answer Garden, yeah. Uh, or where to find some useful tips how to prepare students for IELTS. Uh, so uh, my, my favorite um, websites are IELTS Lees. Oh, sorry, probably it goes like leaseisles.com. Uh, focus on IELTS, IELTS advantage. Uh, 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 you know, it would be easier uh, for, for both of us if you could uh, write an email to me and I would uh, send you the links because now I'm, I'm afraid that I, I, I can probably uh, say the wrong name and I, I will answer to you and send you the materials and uh, links that I use. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, and that's it. Thank you. Yes, uh, and uh, Thank you for reminding. I wanted to share with you that last uh, year uh, in St. Petersburg, I did a course um, IELTS trainer organized by uh, Niall and uh, Macmillan. Uh, and I've been delighted to work with wonderful Lindsay Warwick, uh, who is um, an expert in IELTS teaching. And she shared lots of many more uh, useful ideas and uh, knowledge how, how to prepare your students better for IELTS. Uh, as far as I know that uh, today it's possible to enroll to online course. Um, Probably Natalia can add, uh, give more information on this. Uh, if you are looking for um, the course where you can structure your uh, knowledge about IELTS preparation and how to make it more effective, definitely it's worth visiting, worth doing. Mm -hmm. Okay, tips on IELTS by Sam Makata. Um, yeah. Uh, case picking academy mm -hmm. yes thank you for sharing some ideas mm -hmm. yeah thank you thank you Lydia for your practical hands-on activities that we can easily implement into our classroom I'm um, um, I also took this course in Moscow and now yes Lydia you're right Right now, you can enroll it online. So go on to uh, nilelt.com uh, and I'll send you the link in the follow-up email. Um, thank you all the participants of the webinar. Thank you for your contribution to, the, to, to your ideas that you've shared with us. So thanks again, Lydia. So uh, once again, I want to remind you that Lydia Lysenko is a senior teacher and um, exam trainer at a language school pilot in Rostov-on-Don, and this school is a Macmillan partner. And we always try to give laws to our Macmillan partners. And by the way, on the 26th of November, so we want you to join us on the Academy Stars Club where our Macmillan partner
partners uh, will share their opinions about working on this course and um, you will be able to ask uh, the authors questions. And also on the 19th of November, there will be uh, a webinar it's called Open Plenary for the, the teachers all over the world. Uh, it's 19th. I also send you the link in the letter. So Lydia, thank you very much for your inspiring talk. So I hope so we will use all the activities. So I, I, I also like the dice idea because I've never used it. So mm -hmm. thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, lots of thank yous. Thank you. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.